Good morning. My name is Kevin Frediani and I'm the curator at the University of Dundee's Botanic Garden. I'd like to welcome you this morning to our wreath making workshop. Shortly, I'm going to uh, set up a short video which will take you through the various stages of uh, making a wreath. And then we've got, we're going to be joined by our, my colleague, uh, Claire Rainey, who is leading this workshop today. And she will answer any of your questions about how to source or make or place these wreaths. So without further ado, I'd like to just set up the video and uh, I'd like you to sit back and if you'd like to take notes, please do. And if you don't, we've got a PDF that you can download later on, which will just explain um, the, the materials that you can use and, and where you might be able to source them from. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and welcome to University of Dundee Botanic Gardens festive wreath making workshop and it's a rainy afternoon and here we are practicing our wreath making skills and we've been able to harvest some lovely material from the garden and I wanted to show you a few different ways that we we do this so first of all we're going to look at the oasis wreath which Karen is making and this oasis is like a sponge and it's a traditional way of making a wreath. The spongy oasis soaks up the moisture and then you place your material in a little bit at a time and that will last really well over the Christmas period. And Jack is making a much more natural wreath and he's carefully twisted lots of nice branches around to make a circle. This is a little bit more tricky. It's almost like a bird making a bird's nest and you need to find the right kind of material. So Jack is using some birch twigs, which are really bendy and he's using some pine and he's using some larch twigs, which are also very nice and small and flexible. So when you're looking for material to make one of these natural wreaths, do make sure you're going to ask permission from people before you start harvesting trees. And, but birch twigs and willow twigs are nice and bendy. Mm -hmm. And then you tie them in. And over on this table, Hannah is making a nice wreath based on a wire frame. This is possibly a slightly easier technique to use because we've got a nice wire base and we pre-covered it with string so that the foliage can tuck in and be woven in in between the string. So there's a lot of string needed on this one and it won't last quite as well as the one made out of Oasis but if you leave it outside in the cool, it will do really well. And the traditional way of making a wreath was actually to use moss. And so the whole wreath would have been covered in this lovely sphagnum moss. But sphagnum moss is um, a material in short supply these days. So we prefer to use a system that doesn't use the moss. And of course the wire wreath base, which you can buy locally, at a hobby shop can be recycled every year. We're very lucky here at the Botanic Garden to have an amazing collection of plants and trees and we've harvested a few of these just to show you the different materials that you can use for an evergreen wreath. Um, so one of the easiest things to use is Scots pine and it's nice and bendy and it's not sharp or prickly. Of course, you might want to use holly in your wreath, but you'll need a really good pair of gloves for that. This is another option that you could use. This is skimmier berries, and that's a nice thing that you can add if you put a wire on them to make sure they stay in place. And look for different colours and shapes of evergreen material. You'll find that some is very easy to use, very flat and very pliable. So this is Douglas fir 
and other types of evergreen, a bit like your Christmas tree, are going to be much more spiky and might not be so much fun to use. So I'm going to have a little look at what Hannah's doing with these fir cones. So we've got these wired on now. And this one's come together really quickly. What else are you going to add on there, Hannah? Um, I'm probably going to add some of the berries and the different um, bits of uh, colours and textures of different birds. And then, but first off, I'm going to put cones all the way around. Okay. Well, you know, it's going to be finished before tea time. It's going to be great. So when you've almost finished your wreath, and you're putting on the finishing touches, it's very useful to use a piece of thin wire to attach things with. So Hannah's wrapping the wire carefully around this pine cone so that she can then tie it in on top of her finished piece. And you might use this for whatever you want to add, whether it's berries or Christmas baubles or little baby robins. Looking good. So we'd like to show you our finished work and everybody's worked very hard this afternoon but only for about an hour or so and you can see there's some really lovely wreaths here ready to be hung out for Christmas. Thank you. Some wonderful wreaths there produced by our garden volunteers, Hannah and Jack, and by our um, garden administrator, Karen Bruff, under the uh, tutorship of uh, Claire. Uh, I've got, Claire's going to join me now, uh, just shortly, uh, just to answer any of the questions that you've got um, coming through. Um, I just also would like to uh, point out that this wreath making workshop is part of a much wider initiative where the university have been supporting the communities in Dundee during COVID just to try to create events and activities that can move online so that you can still engage. One of the things we're encouraging you to do is not just make a wreath for yourself, but consider making a wreath for a neighbour or community group that they can also hang on their door and take inside. But um, Claire, if I can actually uh, turn turn to you now, ask ask you um, um, some of the questions that have come come through to me. Um, in terms of the, the wreath, they look they're evergreen, they look really uh, sturdy, but how long will they last? Hello, if you decide to hang your wreath outside um, on your front door, for instance, it should last right into the new year. Um, but if you decide to hang your wreath inside in a warm room, um, you can expect that uh, probably after two weeks it will start to look a little bit tired. So if you want to hang your wreath um, inside, when, then we would suggest that you use the Oasis because that will then you can keep watering it. Um, that's not quite so easy to hang on a wall though. So yeah, you probably want to decide where you're going to hang your wreath first and then make a wreath to suit that place. Claire, I've got a, an, there's another question here, which is around uh, the, the preparations. I'm collecting my plant material to bring indoors to make the wreath. So how do I ensure that the foliage doesn't wilt before I make my wreath? Hi, um, we usually um, pick our material um, the day before we're intending to use it and we cut it to reasonably small pieces, about um, 15 centimetres long, and we can soak those in a bucket so they have a good drink before we, before we use them. And using really sharp secateurs or a knife is, is very helpful. To get a clean cut, then your material will, will last better. The next question is one around, um, this is quite, quite a nice uh, uh, question, it's from someone asking, uh, they'd like to make the wreaths, but they, they're wondering whether it's messy. They'd like to make these wreaths with their grandchildren, um, as something that they can do together. So uh, is it a messy activity, Claire? Hello. Well, 
yes, it's um, I think you saw from the video there was a reasonable amount of mess going on. So um, if you have somewhere that you can use where you can sweep up easily, it's it's all um, small pieces of greenery, the kind of thing that falls off your Christmas tree. Um, so yes, if the grandchildren are making a wreath, um, see if you can persuade them to help you sweep up as well. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. There's another question coming through about um, how, do, how do I, um, this is around the, the, the wreath itself and it's in position now. So how can I make my wreath last the longest? I would, I when I make a wreath for my front door, um, I, uh, I make it um, about this weekend, I'll make it so that it's on the front door and it's in a cool um, position outside in the weather and then it will last right into the into the new year. If I'm going to put a wreath in my house, then um, I'll use the Oasis material and I probably won't be I won't be hanging that up because it will drip um, if it's if it's hung up um, vertically. So the, the Oasis um, is wonderful material, but you can then use it as a like a table placement and you can put a candle in the middle or something something else of interest, some ribbons or baubles. And um, yeah, so uh, um, you are using live material. So um, I, I would say three weeks is quite a good lifespan for a, a Christmas wreath. <laughs> um, I've got a, a another question here, which is about sourcing the, the materials. You mentioned uh, Oasis in the in the video and someone's asked, is there a good supplier for uh, materials to help uh, make make these uh, wreaths, Claire, that you could recommend? We usually source our materials from local garden centres would carry stocks of the Oasis. Um, even if you can't find Oasis in prefabricated rings, you can buy it in blocks and it's wonderful material. You can cut it to any shape you would like to use it. Um, and uh, garden centres should carry the wire bases as well. And don't forget all that string. You're going to need lots of string. So lots of string. Um, I've got, I've got a, uh, this is a really good question from one of our uh, viewers today. He's asking um, about permissions before taking cuttings. Um, she said, is there, is there uh, any guidelines around um, public places, i.e. parks or verges, side of pavements? That, um, and where might I seek permissions or who, who would I approach before taking that greenery? Yes, um, the the general rule is that you would um, you would want to approach uh, the landowner and um, there's certain areas of um, a wilderness around Dundee where it does look as if it's uh, com completely unattended land, but we would really prefer everyone to to be aware of who the their landowner is and look after uh, public relations and uh, just be polite and respectful. Yeah, that, that fits in really well Claire. I just uh, an anecdote I'd like to add here. I've uh, just recently moved into a house in our growth and uh, I've got outside my house I had this really scraggly um, holly tree, variegated holly tree covered in berries but sprawling all over the driveway. And someone drove up, knocked on my door last week and asked, could they come and cut some to make wreaths? And I said, I'll do better than that. If you come back later this afternoon, I'll cut you the branches and prepare them and lay them outside for you to collect because it will save me taking it away to the to the heap. So also look around, you know, if, if people are uh, in your neighbourhood uh, doing gardening at this point in time, there's often things which they can you can save them having to dispose of by incorporating back in. So, you know, think about that cir circular aspects of this. Uh, it's not, it's a one person's waste resource could actually be the raw material for you to put into your wreath. Um, Claire, I've got a, a question about cutting greenery ahead of time. And uh, it's, will cut greenery look okay after a week or so if left outside in the weather? Hello, yes, um, that that's a really good, oh, good way to handle handle material. Um, you would want to just put it somewhere safe where it's not going to get blown around um, and just be aware there's still quite a lot of hungry birds out there who would like to eat your 
holly berries. Um, so you might want to put it in a, a one of a, a shed in your garden is a good place to to store material because then it's protected from the worst of the elements. But coolness is is the way to go to keep your material fresh for as long as possible. There's some really good questions coming through now. I've got got one which is more about the human ecology aspects of it, and it's asking, um, what's the what's the importance of wreath making? Hello. Yes, from my understanding, um, the it's a very ancient tradition of wanting to bring fresh, green, vibrant foliage into the house at this time of year. We're the midwinter period has always been historically a difficult time for us human beings and to lift the spirits and to reassure everybody that the cycle of life is going to start again in the spring. It was very strongly favoured to bring in holly and ivy and um, other, other green materials going right back to certainly medieval days and we think the tradition probably began in the 1600s um, in in Germany, but countries all over the world have um, have brought greenery in, into the house um, at this time of year. Um, certainly way back before Christmas trees began and there's lots and lots of folklore associated with these these different plants, depending which country you you are from. Um, so in Scandinavia, they favor more sort of firs um, and pines. And in this country, we have other trees from. Um, but certainly wherever you go in, in Europe, you see people harvesting what for them is their most locally significant um, woodland plants and bringing those into the house um, for everyone to enjoy over the festive period. Thank you. There's, um, I'll, I'll answer one of them that's come up, which is a, a question. Someone came came to the video late and they've said, um, I didn't catch a string section and wondered if the reef, uh, how the reef is completed using it. Uh, for, for those of you who come, come late, we will be posting the video later on on the university website. It will also, it will go on the, on the YouTube channel. It will also then be linked to on our Facebook um, pages and there will be a PDF put up on our, um, on the Botanic Garden web web page under the education section so you can actually um, follow up on this af afterwards. Uh, Claire, a question here about um, sustainability and they're saying is Oasis biodegradable and I can I just add, add to that as well in terms of the biodegradable compostable but but is there an alternative if I didn't want to use Oasis? Hi, um, yes this this is an issue um, because it's not a it's not a natural fabric obviously um, and the reason that people like using it is because it's so flexible and easily shaped. Um, I have heard of people using raw potatoes so because the potato holds a lot of moisture and I wouldn't like, I've never tried it so I couldn't totally vouch for it but um, if you weren't going to use Oasis you also you consider using moss but then you would want to consider to, you'd want to carefully harvest your sphagnum moss from a proper, a safe source, um, because we have seen sphagnum moss imported from as far away as New Zealand, which is obviously not sustainable. So yes, um, perhaps the way to go would be to start small with a very large potato. Excellent advice there. Thank you, Claire. There's um. There's a, 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 a couple coming through which are about the insects and other bugs that might come in and they're just saying, you know, will there be bugs in the wreaths? And, and I guess a, a, an, a, a, an adjoining question would be, how do I make sure the bugs don't come into my, my house? Have you any thoughts on that? Hi. Um, yeah, at this time of year, um, most of the bugs outside are well hidden away. They they are like us averse to bad weather. So I'd be very surprised if there's creepy crawlies on the evergreen material. And I'd suggest if you a visual inspection and a little shake outside the back door, if if you're concerned, will um, get rid of any stray spiders. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think. No, I've never found anything on my 
Christmas wreath. Okay, I've got two questions in one here because the heading's got one question, but I will ask them as they come through. That is, uh, will spraying a wire wreath with water help it keep longer? So hold that one. And then uh, this is this is a question question linked to it about um, uh, collecting um, holly with berries on. And there's somebody writing that they've got a holly bush in their garden, but the birds always take the berries before December. They live in the countryside and have lots of other things for the birds to eat. Have we any thoughts about how we might divert them from for, towards eating rowans or windfall apples rather than the berries on their holly? So that's uh, spraying wreaths and uh, diverting birds away from holly. Hello. Yes, um, I'll start with the holly berries. Um, when I was making um, garden wreaths in Sussex, um, we had the same problem with the birds eating all the berries. And we took to harvesting the holly um, sections that we wanted quite early on. And then we would just store them in, um, I think we stood up all the stems of holly in a bucket of wet sand. Um, that's a bit of a process to, to go to. Um, certainly in this garden, the rowan berries always get eaten first. Um, I can only suggest that we all make a point of planting more fruit trees or buried trees. So uh, but we've we've been the Botanic Garden has been cleaned out this year by the field fairs and the red wings who come to us every autumn. And there's a great delight in seeing and hearing them around the garden. So we don't begrudge them the berries. And the it would certainly be a great idea if you can um, make your wreath last a bit longer by spraying it with water. That was that was a really good idea. Yeah. I've got a question about lights and wreaths. I won't ask you to answer that one, Claire, because neither of us are electricians. But my understanding from our electricians that I asked that question of last week is that uh, if you're using lights outside, they should be IP65 uh, rated. Um, there are lights now that have sensors to them, but you would really if you if you're looking for uh, lights to be added to wreaths or hanging on your outside door to look for ones which are uh, rated for outside uh, use, not just for light misting with water, but for accepting rain um, so that you can add lights is what they said to me, but um, you would need to uh, uh, seek these um, waterproof lights. I think that's an important one, but if you're unsure, seek the advice of an electrician. <laughs> I'm afraid horticulture we can help you with. Um, conservation in terms of planting more plants, but uh, I, I wouldn't go too far as a, say advice on on, uh, on the electrical side of things. Um, I think the last question I've got is uh, really poignant to those Claire who don't have access to greenery and are concerned about um, uh, uh, the environment, but but do have access to other materials within the house, and they're saying, can I make an artificial wreath? And if so. Have you got any thoughts about what I could use? Hello. Um, yes, we. Um, you can use things like fruit or um, other pine cones. Um, you. I've seen people using fruit that you can you can dry the fruit in the oven, and then you would need to wire it so that you could attach it. So. Um, it's a slightly slightly different skill because obviously the, the fruit is going to be heavy and um, so you need to attach it very securely and you're probably not going to make quite such a big wreath using those kind of things. Um, and uh, there's um, yeah a lot of a lot of garden centers um, or Christmas tree outlets often have um, cuttings from there when the Christmas trees have been sold and delivered, there's often bits of conifer af after the event, which um, could be adopted perhaps. So yeah, um, just have a look in your grocery cupboard, <laughs> but make sure you, um, whatever you use is, uh, is not, going to, not going to go off in the process. <laughs> Wonderful, I, I think in terms of this, um, session it's it's been great to see the questions come through uh, we've we've not only answered some in terms of posing them to claire but we've also put some up in our um 
I answered them direct where we could. What I'm going to do is try to encourage you to engage in this process. If you're watching this video afterwards via our YouTube channel or through the, um, the Facebook site, please do post questions to us. We'd be happy to answer them. Also, we'd love for you to take pictures of your wreaths and share them back with us. And we'll somehow try to work out a way of making a collage so that other people can be inspired for wreath making, not just this year, but every year. As Claire was saying, wreath making is a long held tradition. It goes all the way back. It's pre-Christian, it crosses across cultural domains. Um, there is not only an evergreen aspect to it, there seems to be a deciduous tree aspect to that as you go further south. And I know, for instance, if you watch my Christmas tree uh, video, the, the history of the Christmas tree, we know things like cherry were being brought in in bud and then warmed in the house. And if you think about a wreath, the warmth that will allow the, the buds to then go into early flower is one way of, of helping. Um, uh, uh, this was in the pagan uh, uh, societies looking forward to spring to come because in the dark north, uh, um, it can get quite dismal and rather than actually dwell on where we are in the dark and dismal of COVID, wreath making is something that will hopefully brighten your house, brighten your door and hopefully we can encourage you to help brighten the doors of other members in your community. So can I just thank you all for joining us today? Highlight the video will be posted on our YouTube channel through the university. It'll be on our Facebook channel and if you go to the University of Dundee Botanic Gardens website on the education pages, you'll be able to also access a PDF telling you the materials you need to make your own wreath at home. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's been my pleasure and can I just thank Claire um, Rainey, who's been so fantastic in not only making the video, sharing her expertise, but also bending those questions from us all. Uh, behind the scenes, I want to thank Jonathan Urch and Emma Bate for their support in bringing this video to you live from the University of Dundee. Thank you very much.